For any of you chemistry kids out there, this is going to be easy because we are going back to your former life of moles and molar masses and Avogadro's constant to get the number of molecules or atoms in things. And we'll also define some terms such as heat capacity, specific kind, and just the more general thermal capacity kind. Maybe we'll even solve some problems if you're lucky. In thermal physics, we're often going to be dealing with very small things like atoms and molecules and huge, huge numbers of atoms and molecules. And so we come up with the term uh, the mole. And a mole is just like a dozen. It's a way of counting things. Uh, and so the definition of a mole uh, is this right here. Write it down. Commit it to memory. You could be asked to repeat this exact definition again. What scientists did was they looked at carbon, which has an atomic mass unit of 12 right here. And they said, however many molecules are in 12 grams of this stuff, we're going to define that as one mole. Now, it turns out, one mole is a very, very large number. Let's say this were a 12-gram chunk of carbon, because it's made of cardboard or paper, kind of made of carbon. But let's say that it is, and I've got 12 grams of it. It's going to have exactly one mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms in it. Now, you could also have... A one mole of dollars or one mole of people, but that's way more people than could ever exist on our planet. Now, another definition, molar mass. Write this down. Commit it to memory. Uh, you can have one molar mass of anything. Uh, for example, if we want to know the molar mass of gold, we look at the general periodic table, and usually the big number down here in the bottom in a decimal, that tells us one mole of any substance is going to weigh this much. For example, gold weighs about 197 grams to have one mole of it, or this many atoms. And then the simplest definition is just Avogadro's constant, which is this giant number, and that tells you how many molecules are in one mole of a substance. Avogadro was an actual scientist. It is not related to the delicious green fruit which is an avocado. I don't know that there is an avocado's constant out there. Hopefully you'll see this as a not too difficult problem. Pause it. Uh, based on what you saw on the last page about gold, so you can find out how many atoms are in a 25 gram piece. Hopefully. You started with your 25 uh, grams and you looked at the bottom of that picture of gold and you saw that there was 197 grams in one mole. And so if we do this first, we're going to get about 0.127 moles to start with. Then you got to convert that to atoms. Hopefully you can see what I've done here is I've done the conversion now from moles with Avogadro's constant into the number of atoms. And what you should re realize is that you always have, when you're dealing with atoms or molecules, you're always going to have a giant number. When you're dealing with moles, you're almost always going to have a small number of moles. A couple definitions. We're going to start with the definition of thermal capacity. Oops. This one here. Now, this definition, which you want to write down and commit to memory, because you might be asked to repeat it, is that uh, how much energy it takes to raise the temperature of a particular object by one degree Celsius. Now, the variable that we usually use for this is going to be a capital C and say that's going to be delta Q or the change in energy per change in temperature. Now because of this equation hopefully you can figure out that the units for energy are going to be joules and below it's going to be degrees Celsius. So joules per degree Celsius or you could also do joules per Kelvin. It wouldn't matter. Now, if you have two objects that are the same substance, but they're different sizes or masses, they will have different thermal capacities. For example, I've got this little chunk of iron. He says, I have a small thermal capacity because it doesn't take as much energy to raise his temperature up because it's low mass. This guy says, I have a bigger thermal capacity because he has lots more mass and molecules in there. So it takes more joules to raise his temperature by one degree Celsius or Kelvin. Try a sample problem with heat capacity. Pause it. See what you can do with this one. 
Keep in mind, you don't need to look up anything about gold for thermal capacity. All you need to know is that thermal capacity, capital C, is going to be change in energy divided by the change in temperature. We do this subtraction here, and we're going to get a change of 73 degrees Celsius, and we put in 55,000 joules, because it's in kilojoules. Then we do the math, and we get 750, about, joules per degree Celsius. You could also call it 750 joules per Kelvin. It would mean the same thing. Specific heat capacity is the term that you'll probably find yourself using more often when you're just solving some IB problems. And write this definition down. You could also be asked to repeat it. It is how much energy uh, to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a particular object by one degree Celsius or one degree Kelvin. Now the equation, which is not too difficult, small c is the change in energy divided by the mass and the change in temperature. Keep in mind this is a lowercase c. Now often you'll see this rearranged in maybe the more useful form as q is equal to mc delta t. The units you can probably guess if energy is on top that's got to be joules, mass is on bottom per kilogram per degree Celsius or it could be per kilogram per Kelvin. Now uh, specific heat capacity is going to depend only on the type of element or compound or alloy that you have. For example, we've got our two friends, the blobs of iron, Mr. Small and Mr. Big, and they say, we have the same specific heat capacity because they are both made of iron. It doesn't matter what their mass is. Here's a table of some specific heat capacities of some substances that you might come across. And take a look, you've got all these, many of these are metals over here, and these objects are going to have a somewhat low specific heat capacity, which means that they are going to be easy to heat up, because it's not going to take many joules to raise one kilograms temperature by one degree Celsius. Now look at these things over here for water, and water in its different phases uh, has different specific heat capacities. Look how big this is. So things like water are crazy hard to heat up. When they say, uh, watch pot never boils or something like that, that's because it just takes a long time to heat water up, especially to make it boil, because of the sp high specific heat capacity of water. Give this problem a try, please. Pause it. See what you can do with it. The equation is just going to be for energy, which is big Q, times m small c delta t. And you just plug and chug with your numbers. With your mass, make sure that you got to convert that to kilograms. And then you look up this value here, your 900 joules per kilogram degree Celsius, and your change in temperature here is going to be 30 degrees Celsius. And then you do the math, and you're going to get about 1,200 joules, which is your unit for energy. Ba-boom. There you go.